But strong meat belongs to them that are for which. Can I put somebody's name right there? Strong meat belongs to my mother and my sister and my wife. And I can say that as a fact. Because I guarantee you, they're like I am. I don't like going to a church where you're getting babyfied and stuff all over again. I'd rather go home and drink my moo moo and eat my bonbons. For you people who don't understand that, that's milk and my sweeties, donuts, <laughs> cookies. But strong may belong to them in our full age, even those who by reason of use, everybody say use. Yes. Yes. They use that strong meat. <coughs> Having their senses exercised to discern both good and evil, and those they know how to do it and what to do. Come on. Now, Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, Paul's going to go down here and he's going to explain something here. Go ahead, Sister Linda. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection and laying again the foundation of repentance from the deed, from, from the dead world, from the works. dead works of the faith toward God. Go ahead, next verse, and then you can sit down. Then. Verse two, go ahead. Of the doctrine of the baptism of, and of laying of hands, and the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Now, thank you, Sister. Give Sister Linda a great big hand for being here. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, let, let me break this down here. Remember when Paul says the principal doctrines, and there was elementary beginner class. Now, this is what he's saying. Now, let, let, let me pick on Brother Mike here. Let, let me pick on Pastor Johnson. If Pastor Johnson came in here tonight, and he'd say these words to all of us. Leave the doctrines of Christ. What would you think? Leave the doctrines of Christ? Paul says that. He says, therefore, leaving the principal doctrines of Christ. What's that? The beginner stuff. Doctrines of Christ. Let us go to perfection, maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. So he says, you should not have to hear, you've got to repent, you've got to repent, you've got to repent, you've got to repent. We ought to know that if we sin, we've got to repent. Mm -hmm. So if you've got to repent, then the eternal salvation people must be wrong, or why would you have to repent? That's why I told that one preacher, Pastor uh, Smuck, it was on television or radio years ago, I said, you believe what you preach? He said, yeah, I sure do. I said, how many years have you been saved? He said, 21 years. I said, have you ever asked God to forgive you in those 21 years? He said, I sure have. He said, every night before I go to sleep, he said, I lay my head down and say, God, if I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. I said, you're a hypocrite. He said, what are you talking about? I said, you're, you're not obeying what you're preaching. Because your doctor says you're forgiven of your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. If you really believe that, why would you ask God to forgive you if you already, if you already forgave you? I say, it's a true man inside you. He's checking you. But Paul's saying right here, therefore leaving the principles, doctrine of Christ, let's go on to perfection, maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance. Now, I've been saved 36, 37 years, whatever it is. I don't need another message on repent. I don't need to hear a salvation message. How many of you in here need to hear another salvation message? No. If you're saved, you don't need to hear it anymore. Right. If you know the Word of God, for all I sin comes short of glory, we all know those things. And we know that we... Brother Mike, you know that you know that you know you ask God to forgive you, don't you, brother? Why then would you come in here and then want me to preach a salvation message to you? Why would you want to go to the church? It's going to preach a salvation message. Pastor, shut up! Give me some meat if you don't mind. Yes. Come on. Teacher, shut up. He says, leave it, uh, the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith towards God. So here's the second one. Faith. We ought to know that faith is impossible to please God without faith. For the he that comes to God must believe that he that uh, is rewarded are those that diligently seek him. We, we ought to know faith. And we all know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
So he's saying that was first grade stuff. Mm -hmm. Repentance and faith. That's what he said. He said, lay that aside. Huh? <coughs> Brother John's, how many years were you in the military? Almost 20 years. I don't think in those 20 years they had to take him outside and say, the soldier, this is a rifle. <laughs> and you've got to have bullets put in this. <laughs> no, I did not know that. I did not know what you're thinking. Come on now. Uh, I'm mean, seriously. Stupid. Why are you stupid? Just like I'm 71 years old and somebody come to me and say, Baby Humphrey, diaper. Come on. Here's your bottle, sucky bottle. Come on, come on. Look at me and say, you either get me some good old strong meat out of here, or I'm going to whack you ashore. Sure. <laughs> Go on. Amen, Sister Teresa? My baby? My little daughter? He says, leave the doctrines of repentance from dead works and faith towards God, and the doctrine of baptisms. Baptisms, too. And that means more than one. How many of you know there's two baptisms, which we all know? We need to be baptized in water. We've all done that. There's another one called baptized in the Holy Ghost. We've all done that. I don't need to hear, Brother John, you need to be baptized in water. And you need to baptize in the Holy Ghost in fire. I got it! Many years ago! And of laying on of hands. Every one of us knows these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, if they drink anything dead, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on! We know it's not just not for the pastor or evangelist. We can lay hands on the sick. So we say hallelujah. Yes. Come on! You go to most churches and pastors, don't you touch anyone. Why? Hey, I'm a believer. Why? What's the what's matter with these hands? Hmm? I'm the only one to do it. Where's that in the Bible? It's only five, 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 four minutes. Where's that in the Bible? I can't find it. Come on. That was first grade class, he said. He said, you ought to know you should go around and lay hands. Many years ago, when I come back from a certain country, it was poison, thus and thus, and big long story. My wife seen me coming back like that, and they gave me up to die, and thus and thus, and ate up, and all kinds of stuff. And every preacher and everybody and their brother come to pray for me. They all laid hands on me. And I said, God, isn't there anyone holy enough to lay hands on me that I might re receive my healing? Well, God spoke to me. What about your own hands? I took both hands. Jesus! Yo! Come on. Amen. You get sick, nobody's around. There they are. <laughs> come on. Look, look, look at your hands. Come on, you people out there. Come on. Look at your hands. What kind of hands do you have? Say holy hands. Holy Healing hands. hands. Somebody yeah. say holy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Name of Jesus. <clears throat> yes. Jesus. First grade stuff. Second airborne paratroopers. We probably called the leak. 540 of us started jump school. Only a hundred and a couple of us finished jump school. You know what? We won't have a sissy run along with us. You know why? Because mm -hmm. first shot he might get scared through his pants and run off. 
you're going to have somebody that knows what they're talking about. Somebody say amen. amen. They're not playing games. The doctrine of baptism and laying on hands and of the resurrection of the dead. How many of you believe in the resurrection of the dead? Yes. How many of you believe that there's a resurrection called the re resurrection of the righteous? Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say that's not about me. Yes. Woo! Dog it. Yes. Then he turns around and he says, and of eternal judgment. How many of you know that means hell? Joe, Sister Joe, do you need another message on hell? Do you need somebody to tell you there's a place called hell? Nope. How many of you need to hear that message again? There's a place called hell. You need to hear that, sis? What's your first name, baby? What's your... Mickey. Mickey, Mickey Mouse, that's right. <laughs> Mickey Mouse, do you... <laughs> Since said that the Lord says tell the story and I, I'm not really wanting to tell the story but the Lord says tell the story many years ago we walked, walked into a church first time I was ever there I looked over and see the woman sitting over there and looked on the outside of Paris, looked like everything was fine but I put my head down and started to pray and all of a sudden how many of you remember a jack in a box you want to hand them up and a jack would fly out and rock back and forth I seen this vision and, and had to roll up and flew up, but instead of being a jack in the box, he was a Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in church. And I thought Pastor Johnson, the devil's right, pulled a slick about me. I said, You foul devil, hell, I rebuke you. Jesus' name showed me such a stupid thing in church. Anybody ever do that kind of stuff? <laughs> you got to try the spirits rather than be of God. But something that stupid can't be of God. No way. No way. So I shut my eyes up again. Mickey Mouse. I said, you foul devil of hell. I said, I will beat you in Jesus' name. I'm not going to see that anymore. But God, if it's really of you, let it happen again. Here's Mickey Mouse again. I was lying and I said, oh, Lord. What's this? He said, that woman over there, you tell her it's Mickey Mouse. I said, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Dixie, remember? Dixie. I said, oh, God. Here I am, visiting this church. I don't know nobody. They don't know me. And I'm going to tell this woman over there, it's Mickey Mouse. And who was that woman? It was a pastor's wife. Oh. Which I didn't know at the time. See, God will put you through tests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those that are calling minded, spiritual things and forces to them. Because they've got to be spiritually discerned. That's right. <sighs> How many believe God's got a sense of humor? Amen. <laughs> How many of you ever watch uh, what was the name we talk about coming down the road? Uh, the funny guy? Jerry Yeah. J J Justin. Jerry. Huh? Is it Jerry Duplantis? Oh, yeah, the funny Justin guy. Justin Duplantis. Yes. Jesse Duplantis. Oh, yeah. Jesse. Coward. He said God called him and told him that the reason he called him to preach because God wanted to laugh. Yes. <laughs> he said, make me laugh, Jerry. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I'm sitting there, my heart's going, I've got to tell her it's Mickey Mouse. I said, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Now, how, how is this? You know, come on. I can't just jump up and say, I got a word for that woman or it's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> But how many of you know if it's a God, he's got to make a note to put it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Pastor Stop says, I feel like somebody's got something they want to say. Anybody got anything you want to say? <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, yes. God's wanting to use you now. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Anybody got anything you want to say? I said, yeah. I said, i I, I got to say something here. And I, I believe it's God. I don't want to be disobedient to God. <laughs> I said, how many of you ever seen a jack in the box? And they said, yeah. I said, wind it up and then the lid flies open and uh, the jack fly back and forth. Yeah. I said, I've seen that three times. I said, but every time it happened, I said, the Mickey Mouse flew up out of the top. And God said for that woman over there, 
to tell you it's just Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Man, she flies the oars. She, I got the looking back at me. She's up there crying her head off. I thought, oh my God, what did I say? What in the world did I do now? <laughs> well, sir, it was over because it never really was better. So we just walked out. The Lord dealt with me to go back that night. I didn't want to go back. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I don't know what I said, what happened, but I don't want no trouble. Because I thought, she said, don't play games with you. I thought, I get back here, she'll probably stand up and say, that man there spoke a devil stuff to me and thus and thus and <sighs> Got to church. She wasn't there. I thought, good. <laughs> good, good, good. So everybody ready to start? Back door opens up. Here they come walking in. Yeah! She's still crying. Oh, my God. Oh, my man, I hit with trouble. <laughs> See, the devil don't want to want you to be used. Don't try to scare you so bad that she don't. I'll never do that again. <laughs> we got to close. Finally, she said, stood up, sat the all up again. She said, I want to testify. I thought, oh, God, here it goes. Oh, my God, here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes, my Lord. She said, I have a son that's on drugs. And she said, I've just been praying and fasting for him. And she said, I've been worried, sick, and so forth. And she said, but, she said, when I was a little girl, she said, if something didn't really mean nothing, she said, I'd just say it's Mickey Mouse. And God spoke through that man and told me oh, it's Mickey Mouse. Hallelujah. Oh, Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. See, God wants to use you. Mm -hmm. And you can't figure out mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. I can tell you thousands of stories. Mm -hmm. A woman come on my she was so depressed. And said, you don't feel like God even knows nothing about you your house or anything. I said, but God said, you have these funny curtains in your kitchen. Weird curtains. They're little fuzz balls hanging on strings. They're all red and white. <laughs> I've never seen curtains like that in my life. Have you ever seen curtains like that? No. Hanging on little strings, little fuzz balls. Red and white. Polka dot curtains. Red, red and white polka dot curtains. But how many know God knows everything? Yes. Yes. Newsletter says, why did Apostle Paul call these people babies? Babies don't have strength. Are you a baby? Or do you know a baby? Somebody say, my God is tight, but it's right. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. What we've really got to do now is, is understand. Just to turn, I get ready to play that song there. I have it. You have it. The trials of life is coming our way. We might be living high on the hog right now. High on the mountain. Everything's going smooth and easy. And that's all, but then things change. That's right. Brother John can get come up here and testify about how many years did you fight that cancer? Since I had it. Or since they said I had it. Yes. Thirteen years right Thirteen now. years. Stage four. And when I finally come to him, finally seen him, I can usually tell when somebody's going to live or die. It doesn't matter what the report is. I just have a feeling. But when I looked at him, I seen death. And I tried to encourage him. But I knew the spirit of death was right there. But him and Sister Linda exercise their strength, their faith in yes, God. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Sister Linda said she wouldn't let any people come around to talk negative. Yes, that's right. Amen. How many of you know you can't let people come around and talk negative that's to you? Right. Come on. Yes, that devil will plant seeds of long belief into you. Mm. Destroy your strength. Come on now. Yes. But you've got to get around people that has yes, the Lord. faith. Yeah. I've said so many times, in these last days, we better choose our company very carefully. Mm. You hang around people that don't have faith, nothing but flesh, and I'll tell you what's going to happen to you. You're going to end up 
defeated. You don't will not have that victorious faith. Jesus. You will not be able to know this great and almighty awesome God that we serve. But once we get in his presence, and every great man of God, his ministry did not start until he got into the presence of almighty God, the awesomeness of God. And flesh and blood can't get there. Flesh is enemy of God. This is why the Bible says, if my people are called by my name, will, by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. He said, seek his face. What do you mean? The Bible says no man can see God's face. If you're in the flesh, you can't see God's face. It'll kill you. But if you're in the spirit, Moses spoke to Jesus, to God, face to face. Even a man does his friend, his brother. His face shone yeah. because he's in the yeah. presence. Not just overnight. The whole 40 years that he was there. He had to wear a veil. That's called anointing. But it costs us to get there. It costs us that supper plate, that dinner plate, the breakfast plate, all of our snacks, all these things. It takes time to seek him and pray and smother yourself with worship music. You people right there, you cannot listen to country western music or secular music and expect to get closer to God because that stuff will get in you. Years ago, the Lord spoke something to me. How many remember Star Trek it used to be on? I used to like that. One day the Lord spoke to me. He said, Stop dabbling in witchcraft. I said, what? I said, what? The Lord said, stop dabbling in witchcraft. I said, what? He said, Star Trek. I bewitched Samantha. All those kind of things. Demonic type music. Demonic type pictures. Halloween. So many of you people call yourself a Christian, you're going to, Halloween. You can't get close to the Lord like that. It's a separate life. So say amen. amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the service. We thank you, Lord, not only for what you've done, but Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, and Lord, for whoever it might be out there, Lord, that needs touch in the body. In Jesus' name, Lord, let them understand, Lord. I, I did not just make up my mind and tell these stories tonight, Lord, but these are true things that happened in my own personal life, Lord. And that's just a few little things, Lord. But, Lord, let the faith of the people out there, Lord, and even here, let it rise into the place, Lord, <coughs> where there might be signs and wonders and miracles, Lord, to prove that you are God and bring glory and honor to your name, not to a man or to a ministry. But to you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. So, somebody out there is, uh, it doesn't matter if you watch this six years from now, but somebody right here, right here, you, you, you got pain right here. J just, just lay your hand there right now and say, in Jesus' name I'm healed. Come on. Hallelujah. I, I just feel like, I, I just feel something like, like that, that quick, that, that's simple. That's, that's simple. Childlike faith. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So somebody even in the right ear, you, you, you got a ring, and it just just rings all the time, just just ring, just ring. It's, I don't know how long it's been there for quite a while, just ringing in your ear. Just 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 put your fingers, not in your ear ear hole. These things are important. Don't don't put your fingers in the ear, but just take two fingers right along the side of your ear and just say, in Jesus name, I'm healed, and it's going to quit immediately. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody's taste buds, your, your taste buds are just seeming to just, you don't have no taste buds. Hallelujah. The Lord said take olive oil, and just, just put that bottle to your mouth and just take a big gulp of, of olive oil. Hallelujah, Lord. That represents the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I see a man with three kids. 
your wife has left. She, she didn't die, she left. Just took off on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you, you're, just, you're just confused. You know what to do. But God said to tell you, I got my eye on you. I got everything under control. I got you mighty blessings coming your way. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord, the Lord said do this even though it's going to sound foolish. Just go to your front door and open up the door and just look down the road. I think you live in a, not, not in a town, but something like a development. Just, just look down the so-called road, the so-called street. Because your blessing coming up down the road, coming up the road. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You yourself filming. Amen.